بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سلهم أيهم بذلك زعيم أم لهم شركاء فليأتوا بشركائهم إن كانوا صادقين يوم يكشف عن ساق ويدعون إلى السجود فلا يستطيعون خاشعة أبصارهم ترهقهم ذلة وقد كانوا يدعون إلى السجود وهم سالمون فذرني ومن يكذب بهذا الحديث سنستدرجهم من حيث لا يعلمون وأملي لهم إن كيدي متين أم تسألهم أجرا فهم من مغرم مثل أم عندهم الغيب فهم يكتبون فاصبر لحكم ربك ولا تكن كصاحب الحوت إذ نادى وهو مكذوم لولا أن تداركه نعمة من ربه لنبذ بالعراء وهو مذموم فاجتباه ربه فجعله من الصالحين 
وَإِنْ يَكَادُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَيُزْلِقُونَكَ بِأَبَصَارِهِمْ لَمَّا سَمِعُوا الذِّكْرَ وَيَقُولُونَ إِنَّهُ لَمَجْنُونَ وَمَا هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرٌ لِلْعَالَمِينَ Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, blessings, and guidance of Almighty Allah be upon you. It's my pleasure to welcome you to Perspectives tonight, the weekly television presentation of the Gayan Islamic Trust. Tonight, insha'Allah, we begin by praising Allah and sending blessings upon his noble messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tonight, we continue with Dimensions of Justice. Beloved brothers and sisters, as Sheikh mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he revealed in Al-Quran, Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan, that verily Allah commands with justice and goodness. So, from the message of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all of the messages of the Prophets and the examples that they set, we saw that justice forms the bedrock of a successful society and there has not ever been any deficiency found in the law of God as it relates to his establishment of justice amongst people of the world in all his legislations. Thus we take our advices to you tonight and all of the other nights that we are dealing with dimensions of justice from the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah, when we look at the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we see e equality, we see equity in access to goods and services to, as it relates to what everyone needs. We see equal access to opportunities and equal access to play a part in what governs us in our everyday, day-to-day -day life. Generally, it is the, the, having the rights of everyone fulfilled and the avoidance of cheating anyone or depriving, of, uh, depriving anyone of their rights and what rightfully belongs to them. Uh, before we go ahead and um, start our discussion with Sheikh Sheikh, welcome to our perspectives once again. Jazakum May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and reward you for your messages that you have been giving to us. And these messages that Sheikh has been giving to us over the past few weeks, beloved viewers, are very, very applicable to our society today as we've been dealing with these different problems every day. And I must, I must commend the Guyanese population. I, we commend all of you and ourselves also for the patience exercised in this very, very difficult time in our beloved country and for everyone on both sides of the road who exercised the patience and they, they, they bore with everything and all of the disappointments, we would like to commend everyone and we hope inshallah that good sense prevails. Last week inshallah, last week alhamdulillah, Sheikh spoke about justice in ruling he said that the, lead, the, the leader should deal in a very humble way with the people they are leading or they are govern, governing. He said, do not overburden the people. And he said, just as we just mentioned, e e equity in access to goods and services and opportunities. He says there should be no favoritism. As he mentioned, the strong statement of Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr radiallahu an. He says, the strong with me, the strong people with me is weak until I take the rights of the poor from him. So, he also mentioned justice in judging between in disputes between people. Beloved brothers and sisters, many a times today people have the, the position to judge, judge in disputes between people. They often give the judgment to the person whom they favor. Justice must always be established based upon what is right and what is wrong, and thereby 
not wronging anyone or being unjust to anyone as Allah, our Lord, he is not unjust and he will not be unjust to anyone. So these points that Sheikh mentioned, he also mentioned uh, justice between employer and employee. And he also spoke about when you're doing business with people to give them the right measurement just as how you expect your correct weights when you receive from them. So Sheikh, um, on this note, we would like to continue our discussion tonight. And um, we would like to start out with justice, first of all, with, as it relates to dealing with orphans. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka anta al-alimu al-hakim. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima allamtana. Wa zidna ilma na'amala mutakabbalin ya rabbil alameen. Ameen. Beloved brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As for non-Muslim guests and viewers, may the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with all of you. As we mentioned in the last episode, justice is to give everyone his full right to fulfill our duties to those we have duties to without overstepping our boundaries and infringing upon the rights of others. This is justice. And the opposite of justice is vulm or oppression and this is really to take the rights of others or to deprive them of their rights. And this is prohibited as God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has warned us in the Holy Quran. And as the Prophet, peace be upon him, has told us in a hadith policy, in a tradition attributed back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah says, Ya ibadi inni harramtu dhulma ala nafsi wa ja'altuhu baynakum muharraman fala tadhalamu. Oh my servants, verily, I have prohibited oppression on myself and I have made it forbidden among you so do not oppress one another. And we have mentioned that justice encompasses every aspect of our lives uh, because this is the essence, this is the reason why the messengers have been sent so that people will live on the face of the earth in peace and harmony and in justice whilst submitting to God Almighty. So the point to note is that when we keep on the straight path, when we follow the guidance of God Almighty, we will establish justice on the face of the earth. And we will be fair, and, and hence there will be peace among people. Because if everyone is get, getting his right and her right, and there's mutual fulfillment of rights of one another, and there is no oppression, then people will be living in happiness, they will be living in peace, they will be living in harmony. Problems arise when we infringe upon the rights of one another. Mm. And this is prohibited. And a point that we should note is that the weaker, the weaker someone is, the greater a crime it is to oppress that person. Because when someone is weak, that person deserves our sympathy. That person deserves our mercy. And we have been commanded to be merciful. So if we are going to uh, be bold enough and brazen enough and heartless enough to oppress the weak, then uh, that is a crime of great magnitude in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and therefore, when we look in society, Islam teaches us that we look at all of those who are weak, those who are downtrodden, those who are needy, and we focus on them first. They should be our priority uh, to assist and to aid and to support in society. And so Allah tells us in the Holy Quran, for example, كَلَّا بَلْ لَا تُكْرِمُونَ الْيَتِينَ وَلَا تَحَاضُّونَ عَلَى طَعَامِ الْمِسْكِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us some of the areas in which people uh, who are, if you want to say, devoid of rahmah, of mercy, the areas in which they infringe upon the rights of others. He says, 
No, you do not honor the orphan. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about, as I said, people who have gone off the path of mercy and justice. They have become oppressive. And they do not fear the reckoning in front of Allah. So Allah says, no, you do not honor the orphan. The, or the orphan is one of the weakest persons in society. Because this is a person who has been deprived of uh, his or her parents. And in Islam, a child is considered an orphan uh, even if uh, that child just loses the father. So even with the presence of the mother in Islam, the child is still considered an orphan because uh, he has lost you know, one of the, uh, the great breadwinners of the home, the one who we can depend on for support and protection and so on and so forth. And even though the mother will take that place, still Islam gives that child the status of being an orphan so he or she deserves the assistance of the society. So uh, this is one of the weakest persons in society, lost one or both parents, uh, either the father or both parents. And so it's totally dependent upon others and, and the goodness and the goodwill of others to assist and to help in their situation. And uh, therefore, the Prophet, peace be upon him, has told us, Ana wa kafilul yatimi kahataini fil jannah. I, meaning himself, the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the one who takes care of an orphan will be like this together in Jannah. And he put these two fingers together. These two fingers and the way they are combined and they are, they are next to one another and so close to one another. This is the way the person who looks after and takes care of the orphan in this world in a proper way. And of course that person has Iman. Then we will be like this in Jannah. Because of the great right of the orphan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَن تَقُومُوا لِلْيَتَامَ بِالْقِسْطُ That you should treat orphans with justice. And what does that mean? That means that we try to take care of the needs and the rights of the orphan. That orphan may not have any property, but still he or she has the right to be treated humanely. He or she still has the right upon society and especially the leaders and the rulers of society to be taken care of regarding accommodation and regarding shelter and, and, and food and clothing and so on. That orphan has a right upon society for that. So that we don't just say, well, okay, I'm looking after myself and you fend for yourself. No, society is not allowed to do that to discard someone and say, you fend for yourself. We are expected to provide support. This is the obligation. And as we mentioned in the last episode about zakah, mm -hmm. and zakah is this poor Jew, <clears throat> this compulsory charity that is supposed to be given from the wealth of the rich or those who have a certain amount of money that they have saved over the period of a year that it is supposed to be given to those in need. And there are different categories that the Quran specifies, eight categories uh, to which this zakah can be given. And so orphans and any needy person for that matter, they are deserving of the support of society, especially of the wealthy and those in authority in society that they must be taken care of. So justice to them is to fulfill their needs. Even though we may feel, well, oh, you know, that's not my relative. I'm not obligated. No, someone in society has to be obligated. There must be some system that has been put in place. And those who are in positions of authority in society are responsible for putting this system in place. In the absence of that, then conscientious people are at least required to do their part, do what they can to fulfill the needs of the orphans. So Allah says, and, and so take care of their needs, even if they don't have any wealth. Now, 
what if the orphan has wealth? Because there are orphans also who lose their parents when they have wealth. Mm -hmm. Allah warns us in the Holy Quran that the guardians of orphans, it is not permissible for them to consume the wealth of the orphans in a way that is unacceptable. They're, they are allowed, they are allowed to deal with the wealth of the orphan in a way that uh, protects and preserves it and even increases it. So whatever is in the interest of the wealth. And let's say that a guardian uh, is in need also. And so uh, he or she has to take something of the wealth of the orphan as uh, a form of uh, compensation. Then that is allowed, but it has to be something reasonable. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا مَا لَلْيَتِيمِ إِلَّا بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ حَتَّى يَبْلُغَ أَشُدَّهِ Do not approach or come close to the wealth of the orphan except in the best way. Except in the best way means to do that which is in the maslaha, the interest of that wealth. If it is to invest it in an investment that is that is good and we expect to be lucrative, not something that, you know, uh, is risky and can destroy the wealth of the orphan. No, but to approach it in a way that is good to invest it and hopefully increase it. That is good to take something from it. Allah also tells us in the Holy Quran that if uh, if the person, if the guardian is poor and he is allowed to take, but bil ma'roof in a way that is acceptable, but not to uh, overdo it, not to overstep one's limits and take what is not allowed. So, whether or not the orphan has wealth or property, we are expected to be just to them. You will find in society that if there is an orphan who has wealth, the guardian will rush, or a lot of people will rush to be the guardians. They will, they will want to be the guardians of this orphan. And then you will find that they... Uh, during their guardianship, they will find ways of uh, exploiting and taking uh, from the wealth of, of, the, uh, of the orphan and benefiting from it for their own uh, selfish uh, interests. Mm. And so a justice prohibits all of this because uh, if someone is to consume something of the wealth of the orphan in a way that is unacceptable, then again that becomes uh, a source of, or a reason for punishment for the person on the day of judgment. Uh, and that is why the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, they used to be so concerned about the orphans they are dealing with not to uh, infringe upon their rights that... Uh, if the orphan had some wealth and they would, let's say, cook the, for the orphan out of, out of the orphan's money or the orphan's wealth that they had, they would separate that cooking and that food for the orphan from their own food. Just so that they don't approach the wealth of the orphan in a way that is unacceptable. They will take from the wealth of the orphan or for, uh, whatever they need to take in order to uh, provide for them their food but then they will give them their food separately and they will cook their food separately from their own wealth then what would happen sometimes the orphan cannot consume all of that food it would be left and mm -hmm. spoiled and they would not be willing to take from it out of concern that they are consuming something something that they have no right to consume but because and this these were the incidents that were taking place because the the food would actually be spoiled it, it would affect them and so they asked the Prophet, peace be upon him, what do we do in cases like this? So Allah revealed, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْيَتَامَىٰ قُلْ إِصْلَاحُ لَهُمْ خَيْرٍ وَإِن تُخَالِطُوهُمْ فَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ الْمُفْسِدَ مِنَ الْمُصْلِحِ They ask you concerning the orphans, say, to do that which is in their interest, that is what you want. That is what you're obligated to do. But if you mingle or intermix with them in the sense that the wealth, the food is mixed, uh, then Allah knows who is trying to do good from who is not. Who has a good intention from the one who has a bad intention. Uh, so Allah knows at the end of the day. 
the point here is that the companions of the peace, uh, Prophet peace be upon him were so concerned about taking anything from the wealth of the orphan that was not allowed for them because they knew they would be accountable in front of Allah and so they asked the Prophet this question and Allah revealed the force to give guidance. So whoever is taking care of orphans, whether it's in an orphanage or whether it's you know uh, at a personal level in, in one's home, then what belongs to the orphan, that is the right of the orphan. And it is not allowed to infringe upon the wealth of the orphan because that becomes vulm, it becomes oppression. And whoever is taking care of the orphan is not allowed to discriminate and treat that orphan in a bad way and, and give them uh, the worst uh, of whatever we have in the sense that we will treat our children nicely and discriminate with the orphan. No, we treat them equally. We take care of the, of the orphan. We honor the orphan. Allah says, فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرُ As for the uh, orphan, do not oppress them. Do not uh, treat them in a bad way. Because Allah reminded the Prophet, peace be upon him, that he was an orphan. أَلَمْ يَجِدَكَ يَتِيمًا فَآوَى Didn't he find you as an orphan and he gave, and he gave you shelter? Likewise, when you see someone in need, then treat that person nicely. So, orphans in society, these, these are one of the, uh, the categories of, of people in society who are most in need of our mercy and our justice. And if we overstep our limits and become unjust to them, then... Uh, that crime is so much greater in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is such a vulnerable person who cannot really stand up for his or her rights and, 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 and fight against us. Hence, the, the, the greater need for us to show mercy and kindness. Mm. Um, Sheikh, and then as much as um, the kindness to the orphans and giving them, giving them their, their rights and do justice to their wealth and so on, um, we might have with it with the prevalence of um, the prevalence of dishonesty in our society. We might have people who are placed in charge of the wealth of an orphan, and they would usurp it. Possibly, this can come in front of a judge. We also would like to appeal that if someone is placed in with the responsibility of dispensing justice towards an orphan that they should also be just in this well uh, and again this goes back to justice in judgment in mm -hmm. all cases whether yeah. it's with an orphan or whoever it is mm -hmm. with then justice is required but and then as you're saying the, the the more vulnerable the person the greater the need for justice to be dispensed yeah so we can discuss now a very important aspect of justice and this this um, is very prevalent in our society uh, the justice of inheritance, that when a parent die, then what belongs to the children, they can have it and in the right amount. All right. So if we go back to those verses I quoted, Kalla balla al -yatim. No, you do not or, uh, honor the orphans. Wala ala al -miskin. And you do not encourage to uh, uh, others or people to feed the poor. Again, we can probably just touch here on, on justice with respect to the poor. Again, quickly. Mm -hmm. Likewise, in society, if there are poor people who do not have enough for themselves, mm -hmm. Islam, first of all, encourages everyone to be proactive and to be productive and to make effort for themselves. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, has discouraged the begging and he has said if one of you were to just take an axe or whatever tool you have and go and cut some firewood and sell that it is better for you than to go around begging people yet islam recognizes that people will be in a state of need uh, even without making it a profession mm -hmm. there will be people who are genuinely in need and uh, in that case we cannot ignore them and as for the beggar, do not rebuke them. Mm -hmm. Do not rebuke the person who comes to ask you. But Islam 
shows us great and shining examples uh, from the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him and his companions, uh, coming down of how people gave preference to those who came to ask for something even when they didn't have more than what was enough for themselves alone. Uh, Islam encourages us to give to the poor and to help the poor in whatever way we can. Mind you, we are saying Islam encourages us that we should always be productive. We try to improve ourselves and our situations and come out of a, sta of a state in which we need to depend upon others. That is always better. And that is better for the karam and the dignity of the poor person himself so that he doesn't have to rely on others and then perhaps hear things from others that are offensive. And Islam warns us about that too. That when we are going to help others and give to others, we and this is part of being just to them. Help them knowing that we are doing a, a, a good work or a work of charity which we hope for the benefit of in the sight of Allah. We are not doing it to look down upon them or to remind them of our favors or something of that sort. And therefore, when we give them, Allah says, لا تبطلوا صدقاتكم بالمن والأذى Do not destroy. Do not invalidate your charities by following it up with reminders of the favors that you have done to them and hurting them in the process. Do not offend others. Uh, you know, do not speak in a negative way about them and, and remind them of their needs and the fact that you have to help them. But if we are going to give and we are going to help, help in a way that preserves the dignity of the poor person. Do not let them feel bad because we are giving something to them. And if we know that we are going to do that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَوْلٌ مَعْرُوفٌ وَمَوْفِرَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِّن صَدَقَةٍ يَتْبَعُهَا أَذَى To say just a word of goodness to the poor person who comes to ask. And to forgive them for repeatedly coming to ask and for being perhaps a burden on you. To forgive them for that and say some nice, nice words to them is better than to give them in charity and follow it up with some insult. Mm -hmm. So Islam encourages that we uh, dignify and we honor people and we treat them in a way that is befitting uh, you know the honor of the human being verily we have honored the human being so if we're going to help do it in a nice way and uh, for the poor person yes the right of the poor person is that we try to help them and so Islam teaches us that we should personally help. And on top of that, we should encourage others to help. So this verse tells us, And you do not encourage others to help or to feed the poor. For those who, uh, they do not have this yaqeen, this certainty about their accountability in front of their Lord. And they have followed the path of injustice and oppression then they don't treat the poor people in society with any concern, with any uh, sympathy, uh, and with mercy. So they see poor people, they're not willing to help them, and they're not willing to even encourage others to help. So in this verse, Allah is saying that th these people are not even willing to go to the least that they can. Perhaps they themselves can help others, but what is wrong or... Uh, how difficult is it for them to open their mouths and say, brother, can you please help this person? Mm -hmm. So if I can't help personally, does it mean that the doors are totally closed for me to be of some assistance to someone else? No, if I personally can't help, maybe there's someone I know who can. And I can simply say, my brother, can you please help this person? There's somebody who is in need. I'm not in a position to help, but can you please help this person? And by doing so, we become a means towards the goodness. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, has said that whoever leads to goodness gets the reward of the goodness as well, without decreasing from the actual person who has done the good. Mm -hmm. So uh, these are all ways in which we have to be uh, or work to be just to the poor in society. And then we move on to inheritance. Uh, is there a point that... Uh, you wanted to mention before that? Yeah. Um, that was when you were mentioning about um, reminding, following up help with reminders. 
you know, some people, they would give help, and alhamdulillah, may Allah bless everyone who renders help to mm. the poor mm. and the less fortunate. But they might be, out of their own weaknesses and so on, might be following it up with some words of, they might be taken lightly, but it might be heavy on the person whom, who would have received this help from them in the past. Um, that they should know that if they do that, they will be actually destroying this good. They might be feeling good about themselves, taking what they would have said lightly, and still feeling contented, but they should know that re following up the good with reminders and insults, it can actually wipe away the sin of the, the, the blessing that they would have earned, as the parable given in the ayah that you were reading, inshallah. Right, and then by extension, and, and out of fairness and justice, we should also say that the poor person who receives the assistance of someone else is obligated to show gratitude. Yeah. There are so many people who are ungrateful. Yeah. No matter what assistance they get, no matter what people do for them, they don't have a word of thanks to say. Right. And they will probably go around spreading some false rumors about that person. Mm -hmm. and, and so this is total ingratitude, uh, ingratitude as well. And it is not justice, it is injustice. So uh, give the rights where they are due. Someone gives or assists you, at least, you know, show thanks for that. Say something good to that person. Perhaps say something good about the person, but don't go and say something negative yeah. about the person after he or she has assisted and helped you. Nice. Uh, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, has said, Man lam yashkuri nasa, lam yashkuri Allah. Whoever is not grateful to people is not truly grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so we move on to the inheritance. I think you made right. mention of a uh, thing of the people who usurp the inheritance of the those entitled to it. Right, so the verse says, And you consume inheritance completely. Again, uh, this is one of the signs of oppression, consuming the inheritance of those who truly deserve to inherit. What is inheritance in Islam? Inheritance in Islam is basically uh, the relatives of the person and, and Islam clearly uh, defines the lines of precedence and priority among the relatives who is deserving uh, before whom. There are those who, inheritance is a complete subject in itself, mm -hmm. but there are those who can inherit with others. So uh, together they will divide the, 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 the legacy or what is left behind uh, of the person's wealth will be divided among them according to different shares. And there are those who uh, will be given preference over others in the sense that when one who is closer to the deceased is present, he, he will get instead of someone who is farther away. And, and all of this has been defined by Allah in uh, complete fairness and justice because as we said, Allah is the all-knowing and he is the all-just. So to give a simple example, the parents will always inherit. Nobody can take them out. A spouse, whether the husband or the wife, will inherit. Nobody can take them out. The children will always inherit. Nobody can take them out. If they are present, then they will all inherit. But if there is, for example, the children are present, and certain uncles and aunts who are farther away, they will not be able to inherit because the children have greater right. If the children are not present, then some of those uncles and aunts can inherit, or cousins, for example, can inherit. So it just depends on who is there, Islamically. Mm -hmm. And as I said, Islam clearly defines all of this. This is a complete science in itself, the science of mirath or inheritance. And Allah gives us all of the, 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 the clear principles in the Holy Quran in chapter number four, Surat and Nisa, uh, concerning inheritance. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, explained these for us very clearly. Uh, what we see in society is that among the people who deserve to inherit, uh, sometimes you have competition, fighting, 
among them uh, for who should get a bigger part of the property than whom or who should get all of the property uh, instead of the others and there are always these claims of well okay I was closer to the person the person loved me more I was taking care of the person or it might be the opposite way around it might be a case of oppression on the part of the of the deceased person that uh, he or she uh, left or willed all or most of the property to one family member instead of others who were also supposed to inherit. So there are so many different ways in which injustice can be done regarding inheritance. And what we see, we see so many court battles, we see so many crimes being committed as a result of injustice where inheritance is concerned. Islam has given us the clear guidelines. So first of all, to understand the rights of the inheritors, uh, we have to examine the guidelines that have been given, us, uh, given to us in the Quran and in the Sunnah uh, and the instructions of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So we need to uh, refer to people of knowledge where this is concerned. We can decide for ourselves. Now, a prevalent thing that happens in society is that the deceased person makes a will. And as I mentioned before, out of many times out of lack of knowledge, may will most or all of the property to one or a few of the uh, family members and deprive others. And this uh, also, you know, uh, is favoritism that is unacceptable. We will speak about favoritism when we're regarding children mm -hmm. in, in a while, in a little while. So this is also unacceptable. So whether it comes on the part of the deceased who willed all of or most of the property to one or a few persons and uh, deprived others, this is not acceptable. When that person has passed away, the wealth is no longer his or hers. So people will, will say, well, okay, it's my wealth. I will do what I want with it. It's your wealth when you are alive. When you have passed away, it's no longer your wealth. And it is our obligation to ensure that whatever we do with our wealth, we do it in a fair way. Or else we will be responsible for that in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. You know, when the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Ayyum, ayyukum malu warithihi ahabbu ilayhi min mali. Which one of you loves the wealth of his inheritor more than he loves his own wealth? The companions all said, Ya Rasulullah, every one of us loves his wealth more than his inheritor's wealth. Mm -hmm. Then the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, فَإِنَّ مَا لَهُ مَا قَدَّمْ وَمَا لَوَارِثِهِ مَا أَخَّرْ Then you should know that your wealth is what you send forth for the hereafter, and the wealth of your inheritor is the wealth you leave behind. It is not your child's wealth that they have. It is your own wealth that you have worked for, but you leave behind that house and that land and those, and those vehicles and, and, and the uh, properties, whatever you have, whatever money you have left behind. Once you pass away, that's your inheritor's wealth. It's no longer yours. And our obligation is to ensure we do justice where this is concerned. There are so many cases where people pass away and then the relatives find themselves in a dilemma. How do we deal with an equitable distribution of this property in the light of a will that was left behind by this deceased person? By law, we have to respect the will of the, per uh, of the person which he, is, he or she has left. But then, it is not just. It is not fear. It is deprived some of their, uh, of their rights. And, and the other point to note is that Regardless of our relationship with our relatives during our lifetime, they still have rights over us. So we can't say, well, okay, because one child was more dutiful to me than the others, mm -hmm. then I will give everything to that one child. If you want to give something more to that one child, give that child in your lifetime. And then even then, there are instructions that we see from the Prophet, peace be upon him. But let us say there is one relative who has been, you know, very dutiful, very kind and so on to us. We want to give that person something. Give that person in your lifetime. But ensure you're still doing justice to the others. Give in your lifetime. Because once you pass away, that wealth is no, is no longer yours. It has to be distributed 
according to the dictates of justice as God Almighty has prescribed in the Holy Quran. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> Sheikh, let us now talk a little about doing justice in speech. Right. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا قُلْتُمْ فَعْدِلُوا When you speak, be just. Mm -hmm. Justice in speech? Yes, there is justice in every aspect of life. So when you speak, be just. How do we do that? We do that by striving to recognize where, where truth is and where falsehood is and to strive to be on the side of truth. This is justice. Striving to recognize what is fair and just and what is unfair and unjust and being on the side of fairness. Trying to recognize what is honesty as against what is falsehood and what is fabrication and trying to be on the side of honesty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Holy Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu allaha wa kunu ma'a s-sadiqeen. O you who believe, fear Allah and be with the honest. Be with those who are honest. Be on the side of honesty. The Prophet, peace be upon him, has told us, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmi al-akhir fal yaqul khayran Whoever of you believes in Allah and the last day, whoever of you has Iman, you have faith in Allah, and you have faith in the hereafter, and the day of judgment, when you will be judged, then either speak that which is good or keep silent. This is justice, to be on the side of, of truth, uh, of what is right, of what is honest, and to accurately represent and reflect that. If we are going to be a witness and we are going to testify to the truthfulness of something or, or we are going to testify in any situation, then Allah says, وَإِذَا قُلْتُمْ فَعْدِلُوا وَلَوْ كَانَ ذَا قُرْبَى When you speak, be just even if it is uh, against your own relative. And as we mentioned the verses before, كُونُوا قَوَّامِينَ بِالْقِسْطِ شُهَدَاءَ Allah. Be people who stand firmly for justice as witnesses to Allah. وَلَوْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوِ الْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ Even if it is against yourself or uh, your parents or your relatives. And in the other verse, وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا and do not let your hatred or your dislike for someone uh, push you to be unjust. So if you have to testify uh, for a person who you do not like, but the truth is with them, then you have to speak the truth. Even if you don't like that person. But be just because that is closer to righteousness and closer to piety. Islam prohibits uh, saying or being involved in false speech, mm -hmm. in speech that leads to you know, false impressions. So backbiting, mm -hmm. slandering. Slandering is spreading rumors which are lies about people. This is prohibited in Islam and uh, there are serious and grave consequences attached to this. We spoke about false testimony. Lying in itself. This is a, a quality which if it becomes you know, uh, prevalent in the character of a person, then this is a quality of hypocrisy. It is not conducive and uh, it is not uh, one that you know, goes along with Iman. It is not, not one that uh, you know, is harmonious with the faith that a person should have. And that is why the, the Prophet, peace be upon him, has told us uh, the signs of the hypocrite, if you reflect upon them, they all have to do with 
uh, projecting one picture on the outside, having another one inside, uh, or uh, showing a kind of a double-faced character, a dishonest character. Mm -hmm. He says, إِذَا These are the signs of the hypocrite. When he speaks, he lies. وَإِذَا وَعَدَ أَخْلَفْ Again, to do with speech. When he promises, he breaks his promise. How, 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 how prevalent is this in society? Yes, yes, I'm going to be there. I'm going to help you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But then the person never has the intention of fulfilling that promise. Mm -hmm. And they might even swear by Allah, by Allah, I am telling the truth, I will do it. Mm -hmm. And they do not do it. Because uh, really, they just want to use that word of speech as uh, a matter of convenience for themselves to protect or procure their own interests, but they're not willing to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. So, وَإِذَا عَاهَدَ غَدَرْ when he makes a, an agreement or a covenant, he breaks that agreement as well. And, and this, is one, this is one of the areas of justice. When you make a covenant, when you make an agreement, fulfill that covenant. That is part of justice. Uh, when he is uh, entrusted with something, he breaks that trust. He betrays that trust. All of these. All of these show dishonesty. Mm -hmm. They show a uh, double-faced type of character. Uh, and this is part of injustice in speech uh, that we are prohibited from. So if we're going to speak and represent an issue, then we are expected to be just in doing so. We cannot allow our personal biases and our, our emotions to get in the way of being just about any situation that we are dealing with. Sheikh, um, I, I once learned of a hadith where a person asked the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, can I steal and be a Muslim? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, um, perhaps out of weakness. And the person said, can I lie? and be a Muslim, and he said no, 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 three times. Um, would you say that lying and giving false witnesses and all of these evil speech forms a major, major sin in Islam? Of course they do. Mm -hmm. And uh, rather, the, so we mentioned that hadith, فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَصْمُدْ You should say that which is good or keep silent. Mm -hmm. Because if we keep silent, we don't harm ourselves. Mm -hmm. But if we speak, it's either for or against us. Yeah. And so either we, we try to speak that which is good or we keep silent. And uh, point to note in this day and age of technology, mm -hmm. become, we speak with our fingertips. We speak with <laughs> our fingertips. And it becomes so easy to express ourselves and to say what we want, but we need to check ourselves before we express ourselves with our fingertips. Am I being just? Am I being fair? Am I being honest in what I am typing or in what I am saying? We are responsible for this. And we have to treat that responsibility seriously because we will be questioned about it. Allah says, the person does not uh, utter any statement except that there are two angels who are watchful and ready to record. So what we say is either recorded for or against us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us mm -hmm. for our shortcomings and our mistakes in our speech and in our actions. But we have to strive to be responsible in what we say. Mm -hmm. Then to always be on the side of honesty, integrity, and justice, and truth in what we are saying. And... Mm -hmm. Again, we remind ourselves of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which he said, Alaykum bis-sidqi fa inna sidqa yahdi ila al-bir wa inna al-bir wa yahdi ila al-jannah. Hold on to truth and honesty. Hold on to honesty because it will lead you to righteousness. Mm -hmm. Your speech, your good speech will lead you to good actions. This is by the guidance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And your righteousness will lead you to Jannah. So it starts from our speech. 
to, 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 to be keen to remain honest, to be keen to say that which is good and that which is the truth and that which is just, it will lead to righteousness in our actions. Mm -hmm. And righteousness will lead to the Jannah of Allah, the paradise of Allah. وَإِنَّ الرَّجُلَ لَا يصدق وَيَتَحَرَّ الصِّدْقَ حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ صِدِّيقًا And a person will speak the truth and will continue to strive in all situations to speak the truth until he's written as a truthful person in the sight of Allah. That becomes an inherent quality in him. It becomes his identity. This is a truthful person. And the opposite... Sorry. Yeah, no shake. Continue. And the opposite... And beware of lying. This quality of lying, if you find it, you find yourself inclined to telling a few small or white lies, so to speak, beware of that. Don't allow it to become a habit. Because uh, beware of lying, because lying leads to wickedness. It leads to evil deeds. So we'll start with a few small lies and then they will become greater lies. And then we will justify those lies with greater lies until we end up perpetrating evil in our actions and eventually evil leads to the fire of hell. Yeah, Sheikh, just before we close, um, we're talking about speaking devil, right? Of the person who speaks and lies and so on. What about the silent shaitan? Right. And so this is the opposite now, and uh, uh, I think this may require a bit of time, but when a person remains silent at a time when he or she should speak and has the ability to speak, then that is also blameworthy, and that person is considered like a, a silent shaitan, a silent devil. So... Uh, perhaps this is something that we'll deal with again later on. Uh, you know, when we see evil around us, we are either obligated to try to change it physically if we can, or to speak out against it, or, or at least uh, hate it in our hearts if we can't even speak out against it. We have to hate it in our hearts. Mm -hmm. But if that person has the ability to speak out, knows what is right and what is wrong, mm -hmm. has the ability to, to do something about it, and just remain silent in the face of that, then that is not praiseworthy. That person is referred to as a silent shaitan. All right. So, beloved viewers, this is all the time we have for our program this, uh, this week. We can continue upon this very point next week, inshallah. Um, so, until then, our final words for tonight are praise be to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. شكراً يا ربي شكراً هديت قلبي شكراً وقت دربي شكراً شكراً يا ربي شكراً يا ربي شكراً هديت قلبي شكراً نورت دربي شكراً شكراً يا رب شكراً يا يا منزل القرآن يا خالق الإنسان يا رب يا رحمن شكرا يا رب شكرا يا رب يا منزل القرآن يا خالق الإنسان يا رب يا رحمن شكرا يا شكرا يا ربي شكرا هديت قلبي شكرا نورت دربي شكرا شكرا يا